Okay, we're going to continue with another example of verifying trig identities. All right, a couple comments. This side is more complex. That's the side that I'm going to start with. Since I'm starting with the more complex side, I know I'm done when I get 2 secant squared alpha equals, equals 2 secant squared alpha. So again, I like these problems because I already know the last step. Now, I'll be honest, don't be a smart aleck and uh, write the last step and skip all the middle work and say done. You're not going to get full credit unless you show me all the steps. You need to prove to me how you can explain the mathematical work to take the blue circle and step by step change it to get the blue circle. Like, you have to show me every step in here. You have to show me every step in here. So right now, you have not shown me every step. So you just can't, you can't say that you're done. Because you haven't proven to me how you know to get 1 over 1 minus sine alpha plus 1 over 1 plus sine alpha and get it to be equal to 2 secant squared alpha. Okay. So what are we going to do in this problem? Notice I'm leaving some space on the left side of the first fraction and on the right side of the second fraction. The reason that I'm leaving space is that for me to get a common denominator so that I can add these fractions, um, the right fraction is missing a one minus sine alpha. So I'm gonna multiply the top and bottom by one minus sine alpha. And the left fraction is missing a 1 plus sine alpha. So I'm going to multiply by 1 plus sine alpha. You have to be able to show me the work to getting a common denominator and adding fractions. So the right fraction is 1 over 1 plus sine alpha times 1 minus sine alpha. And the right fraction, oop, 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 I missed something. 1 times 1 plus sine alpha is 1 plus sine alpha. So I want to show you that, uh, again, to keep this simple, when I multiply the orange, I get the orange. When I multiply the blue, I get the blue. But notice I have a common denominator. My common denominator is 1 plus sine alpha times 1 minus sine alpha, and I now have a common denominator. Now, my numerators are 1 plus sine alpha on the left and 1 minus sine alpha on the right. Now, again, I know I'm not done until I get 2 secant squared alpha equals 2 secant squared alpha. But the good news is that I have a common denominator. I'd like to remind you that the pink highlight is the same as the pink highlight. I have a common denominator. And you know what? I think I'd probably prefer a different version of that because the last time I checked, if I multiplied them together, I'd get 1 minus sine alpha plus sine alpha minus sine squared alpha, and the middle signs would cancel out. I think I'm going to write this as 1 minus sine squared alpha because the pink highlight is equal to the pink highlight if you multiply it out. Now my numerator, 1 plus sine alpha plus 1 minus sine alpha. All right. So, again, I just, you, I want to encourage you to show your work. I want to encourage you to show every step. Next step. Um, I've got some, some opposite terms that cancel out. A positive sine alpha and a minus sine alpha cancel out. And a 1 plus 1 is 2. So I currently have 2 over 1 minus sine squared alpha.
And as I told you in this lesson, you're going to hear me over and over and over say, I've seen that before. What's that equal to? That yellow highlight, 1 minus sine squared alpha, is equal to cosine squared alpha. That's the Pythagorean identity. That's the Pythagorean identity, cosine squared alpha. So yellow becomes yellow. So now I have 2 over cosine squared alpha. I'm almost done. Again, I'm trying to show every step. I'm trying to prove to you that, I can, that, you, that you can understand how did I go from step 1 to step 2? How did I go from step 2 to step 3? How did I go from step 3 to step 4? How did I go from step 4 to step 5? You have to be able to show every step. Okay, last but not least. The gray highlight becomes the gray becomes the gray highlight. Cosine squared alpha is equal to 1 over secant squared alpha. And division of a fraction Division of a fraction is the same thing as multiplying the reciprocal. So the work is 2 times secant squared alpha over 1, and 2 times secant squared alpha is 2 secant squared alpha. The whole time that I've been doing this work on the right side of the equation, because the right side of the equation was more complicated, the whole time I've been doing this work, 2 secant squared alpha has been coming down the left side of the identity, and I just have been avoiding writing it because I was trying to be energy efficient. But now I'm just like wrapping up my problem. 2 secant squared alpha comes down the whole entire identity, and my final step is I have shown all of the work for how 2 secant squared alpha equals 2 secant squared alpha.